Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as the Sovereignty of Western Rush. In the last episode, we, um... Did we unify the last episode? No, no, we didn't. That was the episode before. Or was it? That was the episode before, yeah. In the, in the last episode, we finished our political tree and we started our economic tree. I just released the, uh, Irish, or Northern Ireland, um, 2021 census meme. It's been well received so far. Thank you to, uh, I'm thinking of, uh... Austin Mills, Chase Hash, Georgi Paskalev, Gordozin. Um, those are the names that are popping into my head so far. Gordozin, Austin Mills, Chase Hash, Georgi Paskalev. I think that's everyone. So. Ah, blood out. Thick YouTube studio on something. YouTube channel. Ah. I think that's everyone so far. Yes, yes it is. Perfect. Um, either way, we are hopefully going to get through our economic tree today. Um, what did the calculator has been? 14 volts as well? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 14. Perfect. Also, that, uh, well, I'll read this first here. We'll talk about that later. Reopen the universities adds reopen universities, which grants political power gain plus 2% of resource speed plus 5%. Oh, we gotta do this first. The brain train. Fantastic. Next stop, ooh, we can get some doctrines. Fantastic. Mission type tactics. Glorious. Ooh, that's going to be very useful for our infantry. Also, can we, uh, you know, do anything here with regards to relations? We can't. Okay, fair enough. That is fine, I think. Yeah, Alrighty. Oh, that's a big event, yeah. Next up, Vyatka. Oh, I remember this. The emigre is returning. The conductor bellowed the notification over his microphone, echoing throughout the train as a chugged along man with his teenage daughter, that's right, who slept on his shoulder, could be seen in one of the seats. This was uh, Mikhail Voltsevich. Did I get that right? A Russian emigre, just like the others on board the train. As the train kept chugging along, Mikhail would chuckle. He had never expected to be back in Russia with a daughter. He had fled during the civil conflict with his family, and now he came here for a new life for himself and his daughter after the death of his wife. And so, here the two were on the brain train filled with emigre scientists bound for Vyatka. They had come through Arkhangelsk, the only safe way to get to Vyatka due to the recent conflict. Okay, I'd like to know how you made it past the German blockade, but whatever. The train screeched to a halt suddenly, as the, that seems to be very kind of flip floppity whether or not there is actually a blockade in Arkhangelsk, a German blockade. Uh, the train screeched to a halt suddenly as the conductor told the passengers that their train had arrived at its destination. Mikhail woke Alexander up and the two walked off the train. Snow fell onto the train station as Alexander turned to her father saying, So this is Vyatka. Mikhail nodded saying, Yes, it is. Did you ever come here in your youth? No, lower class people rarely went out of their local area when I was a boy. Alexandra soon moved around the station, taking in the falling snow. As she said, this is the first time I've seen snow in my life. Was it always, uh, is it, was it always like this in the winter? Yes, snow fall, uh, pretty much falls here every year. Uh, the two remained silent for a moment before Alexander finally asked, Do you think Mom and Babu would have been glad we did this? Mikhail pausing, trying to figure out what he was going to say. He looked to his daughter, a tear rolling down his cheek as he said somberly, I, I think they would if we were happy. I am, but are you? Well, you just arrived. Alexander, faint smile on her lips as a tear slid down her cheek as well, replied, Yes, I am, Papa, I am, okay. You, you've just gotten you've just gotten off the train into Vyatka. It's a bit, it's a bit early to be calling any, any feelings. And so the two embraced each other in the phonics. Beautiful. Oh, Poopalations, there we are. We'll do it with you. Nice. From nascent to cordial. Now, reopen the universities. Add reopened universities, which grants political power gain plus 2%, research speed plus 5%, decreases education pol uh, public policy effectiveness, increases monthly education uh, policy effectiveness drift. That's what, that's what we want. The drift is, is the important one. With significant funding now available for education, yes, very significant, we must act to reopen the many institutes of higher learning long closed in Western Russia. Then, uh, these institutes, unused and unneeded during the many years of division and conflict in the region, are essential. We wish to ensure that the sovereignty possesses the means well, excuse me, by which to generate the next generation of administrators, industrialists, researchers, and more besides. An inventory of campuses will be completed and reconstruction priorities will be subsequently assigned. Once in operation, we are likely to notice both an increase in our ability to develop innovative solutions or of or improvements to problems. Fantastic. Tax hike? No. <clears throat> yeah, we'll be sorting out this uh, GDP growth soon enough. It's, it's not looking good at all. Hell, I'm sure Kaganovich is doing much better than we are. No, he's actually not. Never mind. No doubt Novosibirsk is doing pretty well. 8.3%. Absolutely. You, my friend? 5.18, I'd better, I'd better tag over to you and make sure you're doing the bloody decisions. <sighs> I hope uh, Cheetah gets the um, gets descriptions for its uh, unique economic development decisions. Because... Oh, another 35 days. Okay, I wasn't sure. Because currently they don't have any any uh, descriptions, which is annoying. Because the description is half the immersion. Well, 
90 days. Pretty much all the immersion, to be honest. Uh, a VYT, that's right. Also, I'm thinking about uh, cooking up a couple of unique videos for the channel. Uh, all all based in the New Order, but um, but still but still very much unique. All based in Russia, actually, as well. I won't, uh, I won't say what they are yet, though. We have more decisions. Good. We are spending a lot of money. But I don't care. We're gonna get the Southern Urals and they're gonna be the single most developed region of Russia ever. Look at all these decisions. Look at them. The UFN gives Angola its independence. Fantastic. Here's the Republic of Angola. The OFN AMC. Interesting. Very interesting. Free Angola. What do you mean unknown focus? Huh, okay. Still one left. How are you doing? I think you, uh, you've got the biggest, uh, the biggest tree. Yeah, but you still, still only got three focuses left. Alrighty then. Very nice. Yeah, this is very much an OFN world, because of course we're going to align with the OFN. <laughs> Look at that! That is insane, man. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah, they, they will be getting, still be getting France and Serbia, and hopefully getting Iberia. That'll be fantastic. Though I can't remember what I want to set for Iberia. Yeah. We get in Scotland. And kind of semi Ireland. We chose the Masses Banner and we chose the Good Friday Agreement, so. You know. Don't suppose. Are you in the Vermark Sphere? No, you're not. Okay. Now, the Kazan Science Academy will gain one resource slot. Ah, oh, resource slots are so important. We'll spend 350 million on research facilities. We're going to slowly improve, slowly increase maximum investment in research funding. Guess me, the Thinking Man's Empire. Hmm. The Russian Academy of Sciences was, for many years, the preeminent educational institution in the empire, producing many great inventors, engineers, thinkers, and cultural icons. That academy is now far behind German lines and utterly inaccessible. To complete our plan of academic revitalization, we will replace this now lost institution with a new one. The Tsar has decreed the construction of a new Academy of Sciences, this time in Kazan. With time, uh, patience, funding, as well as some luck, it will become a beacon of advancement and prove to the world that Russia is no longer a backwards thinking nation. Um, I suppose something good that could come out of this whole timeline, which otherwise is very bad for Russia, is that development won't be centralized around Moscow. Uh, simply because, you know, the Moscovine has been out of. Russian control for, you know, 20 years at least. So, we'll see the rest of Russia be more developed. In fact, it'll be the other way around. We're going to have to re-industrialize Moscow and the, you know, the central Russian heartland. God, I can't remember who said it. I read it online. Was that, um, I think it was about creating democracy in Russia. And when I say democracy in Russia, I'm not talking about Western democracy. Like, you know, fucking Yeltsin and all that shit. I'm not much like general power to the people democracy. That, that to create democracy in Russia, you'd have to burn Moscow to the ground. Um, yeah, but that shouldn't be a problem in, the, in this timeline. God damn. I can't believe we won by 0.3%. I can't believe no one mentioned that in the video either. No one has mentioned it so far. I, mean, I can't believe we won by 0.3%. Yeah, oh, no, no, is it here? No, never mind, that's the RNSUV. Never mind. We, yeah, we had a we had a Nats, a Nats up party called RN, RNSD. Canadian Centennial. How goes the infrastructure stamp? Yeah. Lighter hand in the east. After re resorting hegemony over the lands farm, been most successful to the realm. Blah, 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 blah. Important change. Hmm. Seems oh, oh god, please don't crash. Oh, there we are. Thank god. The Republic of Belarus. Bolsher Bund. Frank Thice. Thice. Mardislaw. Astrowski. What are you? Natcon? Natcon. Reformed? Mm, that's weird. We haven't done that. Oh, yeah, you just haven't done that decision yet. Arachli Bagration. Interesting. You're not, yeah, you're not. Natcon yet. Still with significant Natsoc support, though. Oh, ooh, fantastic. Research slot. I think the Russian Empire is one of the few countries that can get that gets the fifth research slot. Am I right or wrong? I think we think we might be able to get one. Anyway, do this. 
Now, oh, which one should we go for? Industrial expertise, yeah. Has, has that increased yet? I don't think it has. It, ha it hasn't, but it is very close. Okay, we'll hold off a little while, so. Yeah. Oh, look at those societal developments. Looking fantastic. What one will increase? Administrative efficiency will increase to functional, right? Yeah, that's nice. This will be increasing very soon. Yeah, 16.88 a month. That's just absolutely insane, man. It's the highest I've ever seen any societal development. We'll hold off the ads. It's 2% there, which is very nice. No, we'll go here first. The Thinking Man's Empire. So Vladimir III is still on the steps of the newly opened Imperial Academy of Sciences in the city of Kazan. We can improve relations. Fantastic. Did it do it? I don't think it did. That's weird. There we are. Uh, okay, we can and we should indeed do more decisions. I should calculate how much I've spent on uh, Southern Urals. It's a lot of money. So how many men do you have? You know, it'd be good to have men in training, uh, just in case. Just in case they try anything funky. Set a location. Yep, there we are. Nah, but 104,000 men training just in case. That's, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They'd have, a, they'd have a 3 to 1 advantage if they just did decide to go for the Urals. That shouldn't be a problem. They usually don't decide to do it. Now, Tsar Vladimir III stood on the steps of the newly opened Imperial Academy of Sciences in the city of Kazan. He looked out over the crowd before him at the faces of the future of Russia. The next generation of Russian intelligentsia prepared to start their journey into the sciences. The Tsar took a deep breath before he began his speech. As I look out among you, I see the future of the Empire. Each and every one of you have been chosen to embark on a journey to explore the depths of the sciences. Uh, the sciences? No, I said that weird. You will be the driving force behind the evolution of Russian science, the bearers of the torch of progress. Vladimir Paul made a point of looking out over the crowd. Once Russia is, uh, once Russia boasted, or once Russia boasted the finest scientific minds in the entire world, the advances made in the old empire brought Russia out of the dark. That scientific tradition survived the great conflict. It, sur it survived the Reds. It will thrive in this new era of revitalization. Uh, there are those who would call the Russian people barbarians and savages that we have nothing to contribute to the scientific community. These people are the greatest fools of them all. We'll prove them all wrong by rebuilding the great community of science within our new empire. The Tsar's speech came to its end and the crowd erupted into applause. The students into the crowd were excited to begin their path into the world of the sciences. Many of them had been born... Ooh, big... Ooh, that's a... Ooh. <coughs> ooh, that's a big gain right there. Now. Many of them had been born into the anarchy and were, while more well off than most, unable to acquire more than a simple education. Those of the nobility who were better prepared for the days to come, but even they were less well off than their parents had been. The faculty were the best prepared of them all. They all had been a part of the old intelligentsia and remembered the days in which Russia was a leader of the sciences. If they had anything to say about it, the scientific community would beg for the attention of imperial scientists again in the near future. Science is a Russian institution. Indeed it is. Or rather, it will become so again. 100 to, uh, is this? Yeah, 100. That's fine. We'll be getting it very soon. Now, economic recovery. Our GDP growth will increase by 0.9%. God, that's badly needed. Following the reunification of West Russia, the economy is finally showing signs of recovery, and our GDP growth has slightly increased. The initial policies of the Imperial Recovery Committee has have already shown effect. Although the decreases in poverty and hunger and uh, corollary increases in industrial output and wage growth are minimal, they are nonetheless observable. But we cannot stop here. There is much work to be done, and the committee's work has only just begun. Still, it has already, uh, it has already had an impact. Um for the better on the lives of many of our citizens, and that must be applauded, indeed. Also, uh, Tumen is getting reworked to have multiple paths, and Vyacheslav Molotov is one of them, and I'm very, very excited to play Molotov. He's my favourite Stalinist, after Stalin. Probably one of the best lieutenants or right-hand men of all time, to be honest. Churchill certainly thought highly of him. A lot of people thought highly of him, actually. Though it is probably just as well that Stalin didn't live longer, because he probably would have killed him. Or purged him in some way. It's like they'd, they'd started falling out prior to, to the to the Great Patriotic War, but then Molotov kind of made himself indispensable during it. Then after that, they kind of fell out again. So. Or rather, um, Stalin fell out with him. Now, increase in administrative efficiency, though that didn't stop Molotov from praising him for the rest of his life. Now, uh, replaced efficient uh, administrative systems with functional administrative systems. Uh, effective change plus power gain plus 15%. Recruiter population factor plus 5%. Stability plus 15%. That's huge. Ideology defense plus 10%. And 10% as well for taxable population factor. That's huge. 
Social program cost factor minus 5%. Administrative program cost factor minus 10%. Need to conserve goods minus 1%. Can I see? Is that observable? Ooh, hacks out. 1.84, uh, 1.9. Okay, not yet. I think that might be a good, good shout. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There wasn't an event with this. No, there wasn't. Though I do remember there, there's definitely some event here where like they're printing currency and he he prints it wrong and he has to do it all again or something. And uh, now invite foreign capital. Our industrial equipment will begin to improve. Gets event the open door. We will improve our industrial equipment with the assistance of foreign capital. Increases unemployment trinket uh, trinket subsidies policy effectiveness. Increases minimum wage trinket minimum wage policy effectiveness. In addition to its many other problems, one issue facing the sovereignty is a near total dearth of foreign capital investment. Securing such investment would allow for the pace of economic development to be rapidly accelerated. And as such, the Imperial Recovery Committee has asked both the Tsar and the Foreign Ministry to reach out to foreign powers, both near and far, and offer significant incentives in order to promote investment. While doing so would certainly have significant economic benefit, numerous side benefits, including increased foreign recognition and a more rapid decrease in unemployment, have also been identified. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to do the foreign policy tree, and then I'm going to do the middle tree. Is there is there significant buffs for the military? I think there is. Uh, that's that's a production. That's always nice. Yeah, there's one there. Okay, yeah, there's, there's yeah. But, I mean, we're already at professional army. That's the thing. What is only going at four a month, and it is already August of sixty-seven. That that's that's an important thing to remember. Oh, we can integrate. Fantastic. These all these will finish up as well. That's good. Hopefully, hopefully that'll keep going even after the fact. Did, did dismantling the Air Force do anything for the... No, it didn't. Thought. Didn't do anything for the... In fact, it actually increased. It used to be 0.21. Is that because I put these men into training? Hmm. Failed coup in Chile. And you remember when fucking Donald, Tr Donald Trump said Thailand instead of Thailand? And everyone jumped on him for it? Like, I didn't know that it was, like, officially Thailand. Like, I, you know, it's a, there's a H in there, so. That was weird. It was just a fucking weird time. I'll take that as well. Ukrainian National Republic. NatCon as well. Oh damn! You actually have a description. What's a, yeah? I, oh, never mind. Ah, that's a shame. Revoltung's berserk Gotland. That's a shame. Ah, you created Gotland, but you didn't give him Crimea. That's weird. That's weird. What the fuck is that? Since when did you turn red? I don't remember that at all. Since when did that happen? You used to always stay blue. That's so weird, man. Also, didn't I specifically select that the coup wouldn't happen? Huh. Alrighty. Now. Factory output is nice. Well, uh, resources are nice. Right? They don't need factory output yet. Now the open door rush was so fucking gold. Uh, oh, yeah, the CIA or CIA, I think. No, oh, American PR. Uh, those were the thoughts of Waylon Anderson, an American PR representative from Anheuser Bush and makers of Budweiser. Oh, the king of beers. It tastes like piss. He was here to struggle up a deal with the Imperial government to gain an exclusive license to export Vyatka vodka to the United States, just like how Budweiser was the default beer of choice to the American public. Vyat or, or maybe it's a case of, I don't know, Budweiser is nicer in America and over here it's trash or something like that. I don't know. Vyat Kvatka had become the vodka of choice of the West Russian, uh, West Russian public. The hope of Anheuser Bush was that if they secured an exclusive license with the sovereignty, they would be able to corner the cheap alcohol market in the US. That is why they sent Wayland, for he was one of the few PR people who knew a bit of Russian. Wayland had never been to Russia and only knew Russian due to the fact he studied alongside German, Spanish, and Italian, used to the warm summers and mild winters of California. Russia was like a slap in the face with its winter. It wasn't helped by the locals in Vyatka always just staring at him. He guessed that most had never seen a foreigner in their lives and they were clearly hesitant around him. Uh, however, I uh, must. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, however, th that did not matter, for Whalen was here for the vodka, not the people. He eventually arrived at the Vyatka distillery, being greeted by a large man shouting, Greetings, greetings, my American friend, welcome to Russia, where vodka drinks you every day. <laughs> Whalen looked at the man asking, uh, What? The man looked confused for a second before shaking his head, saying, Oh, sorry, my friend, I mean, I meant you drink vodka every day. My English is not good. I am sorry. No, you are. Suddenly, Whalen was about <laughs> to be hugged by the large man and a nice warm bear hug, sighing. Whalen thought to himself, My God, can I go back to my office, please? Ah! 
You're getting good hospitality. Oh, what's this? Oh, God damn it, it's a fucking porn bottle in one of the videos. I never leave you alone. There we are. Now, uh, oh, that's seven days. That's fine. That's fine. Is, is this the. Yeah, seven days roll. That's fine. Now, the Witter currency reform. Our inflation will decrease by 0.5%. The eponymous Witter currency reform, named for the member of the Imperial Recovery Committee who designed it, council minister and member of the Imperial Recovery Committee who suggested it, focuses on both the introduction of a single centralized currency and the mandate of it as the only form of legal tender within the sovereignty. This will act to combat the continued use of regional currencies, inequalities in purchasing power, stability, and black market transactions and exchanges besides. The result has, has been promised to be after an initial period of disorder as the system is converted, an overall increase in coordinated economic activity. Fantastic. Oh yeah, it's also well, it didn't keep rolling, yeah. You're about to run out. I'm gonna pop a save, because sometimes they like to say no. Uh, but I, I won't be, I shan't be taking no for an answer. Not, not at all. I spent a lot of money, and I want their units, and I want the territory, and I want the cores, and I want the national spirits. So, give them to Gimme, gimme, gimme. I think the Ornbargian said no. Fuck. That's right. How was I able to fucking guess that? Just out of interest, what does the EuroLeague say? Oh, the EuroLeague accepted! Huh. Yeah, we'd, we'd get their units, we'd get their cores. This is 20.63 million. 21.81 million, how many million? 52,000, not insignificant. Oh, that's a pause. Well, see, this is why you save. Now, I could use the tool pack to just, you know, annex them, but I wouldn't get the national spirit, uh, which, which is what I very much want. The German civil is just a bit the culmination of the German race's own thirst for blood. Once they run out of enemies to fight, they inevitably revert to a primal state, tearing themselves and their own country apart. That's supposed to be a panhard. IFV. Yeah, this, this, this is very Call of Duty Black Ops-ish, and Black Ops-ish. That says Vasily Shukshin. Please don't fucking tell me that's his actual name and that and that it's Shukshin and not Shushkin. Oh my god. Is, is this another Prokriskin case? It's fucking Shukshin. Oh my god, it's Shukshin, not Shushkin. Oh, what the fuck? I've been calling him Shushkin since the game launched, the same way I was calling him Parishkin and not Pakrishkin, because I, I just did not see the first K. Oh my god, it's suction. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now let's run that again. Say yes. Or you pussy, bro. Actually, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll deploy units on their borders. Maybe that will help. I'll persuade them. Got them. Fucking suction, lad. Suction! Not suction! Suction! Oh, that drives me up the walls. And I've been getting someone's name wrong for ages. Ah, you said no again, you bitch! I wouldn't mind. The Euro League says yes, like. Why are you fucking rejecting? I'm gonna run it again. But I'm, I'm not gonna keep, you know, recording it, because that'll be futile. I'll be back when they accept. And if they don't accept, I'll tag over and make them accept. Alright, there we are. They kept saying no, so I just tagged over and made them say yes. Um, didn't have to do anything, did you? I don't think you did. That is good. Just do that. You didn't put any men in training, because you couldn't, because they're all full up. I made, I deliberately took political power off of myself so that, um, so that they wouldn't take any decisions that I didn't want them to take. Seems to be a good strategy. Now, I'll be taking those lovely integration no notifications, events. What's now the Euro legal saying or some shit like that? Ornberg accepts integration. Yeah, it's the same event. That's no, fine. We get all of their unit leaders, we annex them, we gain cores and all of them, we gain the wealth of Ornberg National Spirit, which grants construction speed plus 5%, factory output plus 10%, consumer goods production factor plus 5%, and political power plus 150. Wait, I didn't mean to. 
Wasn't that? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, oh, okay, that's my bad. Minus. Um, and again, yes, we gain course on all of them. Click. Beautiful. 23.22 million people. So many people that was. 453,000 in Orsk. 1.28 million in Orenburg. 603,000 in Starlatmak and Alexeyevka. Alexeyevka. 245,000. I think that's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have it? No, we didn't. Because this, this is just, yeah. Now, slowly increases a monthly military training policy effectiveness. We gain all their unit leaders. We gain cores and all of them. We gain the Euro Guard training, which grants army experience gain plus 10%. Special forces attack uh, plus 10%. Special forces deep defense plus 5%. Now, why don't you really use Marines? You know, uh, paratroopers. What else is there? Marines and paratroopers. That's, not, that's, yeah, that's kind of it for special forces in the water. Is, is the more. Marines, paratroopers. What else? Oh yeah, air assault units, that's right. But, elite infantry in the new order counts as special forces, so never discount special forces attack and defense. Minimum training level plus 5%, special forces capacity multiplier percent, and again, that's very important. Army experience is 50, and again, we gain cores on all of them. Beautiful. From that yeah, we gained 128,000 men. That is beautiful. Oh yeah. 568, oh my god, we can feel what, 672,000 men. And we'll get 150,000 when we go to war with, uh... Tumen. Well, I've got to start doing these decisions. That was beautiful. beautiful. Alright, we're getting 3.8% growth. We're starting to claw our way up. Now reorganize the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> That's not a very useful focus. The Ministry of Finance was originally established to manage the economy of the lands in and and around of the Africa during the days of the Yeah, this is the one. Uh days of the German actually no, I'll read this first. This is the one that I remember. Sadly turns the down I always have to. Or new song rather. Music. Now. Making money, literally. Shouts filled the air as printing machines will work as fast as they could could be. Her oh, excuse me. Hurry this up, shout of Boris Skasirev. Oh, you... You're not here, but you are part of the government. You're, you're, you're the guy who, um... Oh, watch him call us. You pretend to be that prince in Andorra or some shit like that. Annoyed at how slow his operation was moving. The more we print, uh, the more money I have. I mean, we have... If you don't meet quota, you know what happens. I'll be in my office closing the door behind him. So he could have at least some quiet bars peered out the window to watch his workers, who were mostly poor and unemployed peasants who could do nothing else. Uh, he just hoped they would execute his perfect plan well enough. This was his... First mistake, I imagine it says. This was his... Well, best idea yet, never mind. And that came from the door and his assistant walked in. Sorry, we may have a slight problem. They changed the design of the 500 rubles, so we're going to have to throw all those out. They did what, Boris? Yeah, let me uh, see that new design. Check it over, Boris. As he noted how the new design was entirely different from the old hotel. Everyone will be working overtime for the next week. I also want all the old ones burned so we don't have any leftover evidence. Oh, Central Africa gets independence. Lovely. Yes, of course, replied the assistant. Oh, and by the way, you might want to check the, the 1,000 rubles the guys printed. The assistant handed him one of the notes. Is this supposed to be Vladimir? He looks like a little girl. Boris tore the ruble into pieces and threw them into the trash can. One last thing, the guys just found uh, just found out they printed uh, Nikolai's head upside down. Uh, upside on the 5,000. Don't worry. They'd only printed a couple thousand before they caught it. Just let him have this one. Yeah. Oh, good, we are getting our schools. Fantastic. Lovely schools. We'll have a ton of schools by the end of this. I bet we already have loads, don't we? Yes, we do. Loads of schools, prisons, army bases, and administrative offices, but not hospitals. That's a bollocks. Oh. Better industrial expertise. Replace nascent with experience, production efficiency, retention plus 20%, cap and growth plus 10%, annual GDP growth factor plus 3%. Consumer goods production factor plus 10%, military industry expertise cost factor plus 20%, naval industry cost minus 25%. Na um, why does the military industry... See, that's weird. You never see any naval industry expertise. It's only just naval industry cost. That's odd. Yeah. Naval industry cost minus 25%, need consumer goods plus 1%, societal development progress plus 25%. Oh, did I, did I plug in the thing? Did I? I did. I'm fine. Good. Now... Reorganize the Ministry of Finance. Uh, da, da, da. Those days uh, those days are long past, but the Ministry is still organized as it was at that time. Surely not. 
In a fashion wholly unsuited to the administration of an economy on a truly national scale, at the request of the Imperial Recovery Committee, the Ministry will be restructured, instituting proper local, regional and national hierarchies to better address the economic concerns of different national areas. It will also assess the skills of its employees and hire new ones in order to ensure efficient and continued operations across the entirety of our territory. Beautiful. 4.1% growth, alright. Broke the 4% barrier. We have a lot of equipment, don't we? Yes, we do. We have a lot of anti-tank equipment, a lot of artillery equipment. Oh yeah, we have enough. Good amount of trucks, good amount of support equipment. Beautiful to see. Actually, it's probably very important then that we research. I suppose I want to use as many support companies as possible, please. Honestly, I'll actually take because we won't be using any of those. Um, we won't be using the factories. Imperial Army Coon Mentorium. Thank you. The principles of solidarism. Add a planned economy which grants production efficiency retention and production efficiency capital is 10%. Each decreases trade laws, export focus policy effectiveness, increases income taxation, flat taxes policy effectiveness. Our income will become our, our income. Our economy will become more uh, centralized by 10 years. Free market economy doesn't really. Well, it kind of fits us, I guess. The victory of Alexander Solzhenitsyn Solidaris at the Congress of Vlogda has, as in all other aspects of our government, had an effect on the Imperial Recovery Committee. Firmly committed to corporatist ideals, the Solidaris have required the, their implementation as part of any economic recovery plan. With the focus on the organisation of the economy around identified interest groups and production sectors, it is expected that the overall efficiency of our industrial base will increase. Yet, yeah, the VNS one is going to just continue making people poor. <laughs> oh, man. We get 1% here. Alright. So that'll... Okay, that'll bring us to 5. Okay, we'll, we'll get to 7% growth. That's not bad, but we want to, you know... Yeah. Still not a whole lot of growth. Okay, we got to 17.46. Wow, but that's because we annexed here. Yeah. What's our GDP per capita? $712. Yours is probably better. Yeah, 11th. Yeah. 11.53. Yours? 13.04. We probably have the worst in, in the region. 54, yeah. Alright, tag CHT. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep tagging over them to make sure that they're doing those development decisions, otherwise, it's just not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Two thousand six hundred men. Also, speaking of men for recruitment, the Russian mobilization campaign so far is looking pretty goddamn good. Like in three hundred thousand, my ass. It's gonna be a lot. I think it was th it was three hundred thousand in the speech, but the speech don't mean shit. The decree is what matters, and the decree is. Yeah, the decree is rather all encompassing. What the hell? Why did we? Deploy did I? What the? How the fuck? I'm so confused. I don't remember. I don't remember put setting. Oh, the, oh! I did. I did do that. I did. That's my bad. That's my bad. My bad. My bad. Ooh, more land doctrine. No air doctrine this time. Although we soon we will get more. Land doctrine. Hopefully, get that finished by the time we get into a conflict with uh, Tumen. Holy shit. Now, the miracle on the Vyatka. Our property will begin to rapidly improve. Good, we haven't gotten really anything for that the whole game. Yeah, it's looking this. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great either. Well, actually, it's alright. Um, with the economy reformed, the empire is prospering again. Our GDP growth will increase by 1%. The efforts of the Imperial Recovery Committee have, despite some political opposition, had a real and significant impact on the overall economic health of the sovereignty. Domestic products has risen sharply, uh, the sophistication of our industry has increased, and foreign capital is finally once again entering Russia. These advances, combined with a dramatic increase in administrative efficiency, 
as resulting from further reforms, has provided the nation with a robust and future-oriented industrial base by which to effect, uh, by which to effect eventual unification. The Tsar has put in motion his plans for each and every member of the committee to receive a national award presented by himself. If a soldier can receive a medal for helping one fellow Russian, so too can uh, the committee for helping millions. Indeed, it's going fairly well. That's going well. That's going really well, actually. We we'll get the cutting edge. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely get the cutting edge. Of course, we'll get to modern agriculture. Uh, might not get to streamlined, depending on how the super regional folk tree looks. Rudimentary, yeah, we'll definitely get to factory complexes. And yeah, we'll, well, yeah we should get to um, Spartan discipline. A lot of people talk up Tukhachevsky because of his Spartan discipline. Many other unifiers can get Spartan discipline. And, and uh, uh, what's his face? Tukhachevsky can only unify with one other unifier, uh, Vasilevsky. He can't unify with anyone in West Siberia. So, the less bloodshed, the better. The less money spent on inter-Russian wars, the better. Th that, that's why I don't really rate Tukhachevsky very high um, when it comes to unifiers capable of beating Germany. Especially we can tell that Vasilevsky does not fucking win in Central Siberia. Very nice. Four point nine percent growth. All right. Now industrial recovery. Let's just turn the music back up. Our industrial expertise will begin to improve. Our industrial expertise will slowly start improving. No, it's not slowly improving. It's improving. That's a, that's a very big, uh, big difference when it comes to the uh, societal developments. We'll spend 50 million. Industry in Western Russia has not yet even fully recovered from the German bombing campaigns, let alone from the devastation inflicted during regional unification. The Imperial Recovery Committee has therefore identified the fundamental reconstruction of the extant industrial base as a primary objective in order to permit its contribution to further projects. Funding has been dedicated in order to ensure that reconstruction is completed as quickly as possible. This is but the first step towards rapid expansion, but it must be taken nonetheless, indeed. Oh, I think it was about 0.10% a month that they rapidly improved property rate. That's fantastic. What's your poverty rate? Probably better. Oh no, it's about the same, actually. Actually, no, we're better than you. Yours is definitely better than ours. Yeah, that's to be expected. No, not getting bombed, Siberian plan. Oh, earn the sphere. 75%, yikes. That's odd that you can join the Japanese. Yeah, that's kind of weird. You should only really join the Japanese sphere at the super regional stage. Ah, for fuck's sake, man hasn't even done his... Oh my god, that's infuriating. He hasn't even started his... Oh my god, man. What's your GDP growth? Yeah, you're doing a deficit spending, that's why. Which isn't even good. Oh man, that's... That's, that's a pain in the ass. I'll just stick straight. Man of the Iron Fortress. I, what's that about? Zerzinski's here. Iron Felix. Now, which one of these is better? Well, neither, really. All right. Rebuilding the civilian sector. Highly increases healthcare emergency support policy effectiveness. Increases workplace safety minimal regulations policy effectiveness. Highly increases minimum wage, trinket minimum wage policy effectiveness. Owing to our previous efforts towards both reconstructing excellent industry and constructing new infrastructure corridors, we can now take efforts to expand the civilian economy through strategic spending as well as the provision of attractive subsidies. We can encourage the construction of factories focused on the production of domestic goods. The value of even the most basic amenities in ensuring uh, societal, societal disability and public support of the government should not be underestimated and by encouraging their creation we not only obtain that support but increase employment and domestic product besides fantastic five percent growth all right two three seven field hospital one fantastic get yeah, field hospital two we need to every russian life is is more valuable than in our own timeline And obviously, it's, it's generally a good idea to uh, to not let people die. 
usually. But yeah, the fucking like I've seen the I've seen the protests in some parts of Russia um, due to the general mobilization. Well, well, it's it's supposedly partial, but there's nothing fucking partial about what I'm seeing. But uh, I I did, I did see a fucking very good video, uh, or rather a funny video. It was this guy, I think it was two guys actually, and they turned up to an anti-war protest to basically show their support for the uh, for the mobilization and for the special military operation, and then they get dragged into the mobilization bus <laughs> against their will. I thought that was pretty funny. Expand state welfare programs. Yes, we very much need that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, now, now that the Urals are secure, and we don't really need, um, and we don't really need, um, oh, what's my fellas? We don't need to be worried about them swooping in, swooping in and taking the Urals from us. I can tag over and auto-complete uh, compl ah, auto a few focuses for them, just to speed them up because they unified them very late. Let me see, February 68, so we got 25, 50, 75, 100, 25, 50, 75, 300, yeah, 25, 50, 50. Yeah, I think I might just do it all this way. Maybe we'll just be working away. So how's the um, of the five-year plan going? Are you are you starving? Please don't be starving. Oh, you're it's 78. Good job. Good job. I think um, Tuman can actually get. Um, I think Tuman can kill more people, more people per capita. I know, and I know that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. Um, Tuman can kill more people, say, as a population of their. Oh, never mind. I was like, what the fuck? No, that, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd tanked back. No, there we are. Tumen can kill more people as a percentage of their population than uh, Tabriski can. With the because uh, I think if you get the worst level of famine, it's like minus five hundred percent monthly population or something, something ridiculous like that. I think I never actually tested that, so it's all you say. Now connecting our realm, built a level one railway from Sirzan to Chebaksari, as well as from Fiatka to Siktivkar and Perm to Ofo. The widespread destruction of national infrastructure is another legacy of the chaos that once engulfed Western Russia, and this severely limits the civilian economy, both in absolute size as well as in expansion and development potential. Thus, a focus will be placed on the construction of new railroads and highways between our major economic centers and ports. This will promote the movement of people and goods as rapidly as possible and in as large a grouping as possible, and so encourage further economic expansion within the sovereignty. If the Novi port, like, it isn't actually a port, is it? No, it's not. Oh, you actually do have a port here, though. Or rather, a naval base. Yeah, it's close enough. I don't remember there being anything here about a port. 2%. Yeah, the production units to GDP ratio modifier plus 15% is very strong. Encourage physical thought. Yes, please. Tax hike. Thirty-two production. Ultra reformist. Uh, yeah, ultra reformist despair. Hasn't done the Veramax tree yet. Have you done the economy tree? How are you getting on there? Guiding in India. Yeah. Improve worker training, invest in scientific research, allocate education funding, encourage agricultural mechanization. We actually might need to do that ourselves. The uh, focus is auto complete. 
Let me check. 25, it's February, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 2, 225, 250, 275, 3, 325, 350, okay. Yeah, most likely, to be honest. Now invest in Russian business. We will spend 400 million. Our GDP growth will increase by 2%. Russian business has for a long time barely existed. Owners lost their factories either to red expropriation or German bombers, but times have changed, and even the relatively short time since unification, we have observed the organic development of a small-scale industry. Among some of our more enterprising citizens, this presents an opportunity. By investing in these businesses and subsidizing the formation of new ones, we can accelerate the generation of domestic industry by citizens, rather than by direct government intervention. Yeah, but yeah. We'll give them subsidies, but this is somehow not, not direct government intervention. Like, what? The Imperial Recovery Committee has been very clear that such is the pathway towards true economic growth, and neither we nor the Tsar have any reason to disagree. Yeah, guys, we're not going to intervene in the economy. Anyway, here's subsidies. Norway's free, yes? Yes. yes. But somehow still in the Iron Heist What the fuck? How? How was that a thing? Didn't even know that was a thing. I assume that they'd, they'd have joined the OFN. That's really weird. I suppose it kind of works with the whole reform of spirit thing, right? Advanced developmental subsidies, yes, absolutely, please. That's fine, we haven't selected a place. Good, good, good. Yeah, none of our bloody advisors have any feckin' descriptions. Or none of our government ministers, rather. That's such a pain. Oh, minus point three, fantastic. I didn't see any... Yeah, I didn't see any advisors here. I'm not sure advisors. Hopefully we'll get those as well. No reason we shouldn't. Now, that's the economic tree done. Time to hop over here. For the diplomatic tree. Re-establishing contacts and gets event ready for diplomacy. With the establishment and political stability of the sovereignty established, it is now time to do something that no Russian state has done in a long time and begin a coordinated and global diplomatic campaign. We have many resources to offer the world and need just as many advancements and investments in return. Here we are. Heavy machinery, property relief programs, foreign investors. Welcome, welcome. Serious investment will be required in both the establishment of reliable diplomatic infrastructure as well as the standardization of treaties of recognition, trade and... Inter and uh, ex Extranational representation? Is that extranational? That's not a phrase and word I'm familiar with. They will be made. Russia will no longer stand alone on the world stage. Let me see if that's a word. X. E X. Oh shit, was it extractional? No, it's extranational representation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all 60s, 60s, it's all fine. Yeah, that's all fine. Nothing more I can do there. It's grand. Back to interest. Oh, we lost a couple of production units, eh? That's unfortunate. It's all fine. Hmm. I managed in Central Siberia's probably done with their focus train. Yep. And you aligned with the OFN. That's cool. That makes things easier. And the, uh, because Mikhail has won here, he'll align with America. Well, well, kind he, he'll get rid of Japan, which makes, makes things easier for us. Of course. You don't really have <laughs> too much contact. Oh, you, you went to nod to the west. That's good. That's good. Expand the power grid, absolutely. 
literally only doing it because it gives me uh, it gives one state an increase to its GDP of three percent, and it, and it gives some some regulations, whatever. Now there we are, fantastic. Ready for diplomacy. With the internal political situation in the sovereignty stabilized, we can now do something Russians have not done in many years. Look outward. We, can, we tend to try and form relationships wherever we can with both new friends and old, prioritizing both diplomatic recognition and trade relationships. Legitimacy critical for our claims over the rest of Russia can be obtained through connections with both the Organization of Free Nations as well as a number of European monarchies. The more positive relationships we can build, the stronger our nation will be. Ooh, Salazar's gone. Uh, with each new treaty, agreement, understanding, and friendship, Tsar Vladimir demonstrates his leadership and thus his right beyond bloodline to rule over Russia in its entirety. The sovereignty is open for business. That's a fact. I love how many variants there are of this song. Now, the Imperial Diplomatic Corps gets about the Imperial Diplomatic Corps. Political power plus 75, add foreign trade, which grants in order to achieve our diplomatic goals and open our nation to the world. The sovereignty must have a capable and professional diplomatic corps. Significant investment will therefore be made to ensure that we do. The Imperial Diplomatic Corps will be prioritized in order to ensure that it attracts the best and brightest and sent around the world. They will secure advantage for the state. Uh, agreements of diplomatic recognition, trade, mutual protection, and perhaps eventual global alliance can and will be pursued. In doing so, Russia, uh, Russia will prove once again that it is once again at least a regional power and should be negotiated with as such. Will certainly be that. We'll control Central Asia, be able to influence the likes of Iran, Afghanistan, the Chinese warlords. We elect the Prime Minister, of course, have our influence in Finland and the West. Five point eight. What happened to seven? Huh. It makes sense if it was six point eight, but what happened there? I almost know the 600,000 raised to mobilize. Also, I love how people were like, um, but, uh, for, as soon as Russia announced mobilization, people just immediately took, well, I say, I say people, pro-Ukrainians, naturally, immediately took just, um, just the worst take possible. It's like, how are they going to give all these men equipment with the vast stores of Soviet equipment? What the fuck do you think? And now all I'm seeing is videos of fucking BMPs fucking ro on rolling stock, just rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. I saw, the, I saw the picture of a, well, not a picture, a uh, video of an Antonov in Magadan, around Magadan Airport. Uh, if, there, if there is an airport in Magadan. Either way, I said it was in Magadan, just a large number of reservists getting ready to, uh, getting ready to get onto the plane. Yeah, it, it's, there's nothing personal about this mobilization. I'm sure NFKRZ, that constant Russian hater, will not be pleased. Like, like, the guy is Russian and he lives in Russia and his YouTube channel is based around hating Russia. Start with Europe first. Now, the Imperial Diplomatic Corps. As an ostensibly legitimate nation, the sovereignty must open up to the world, both in venturing out and in allowing others inside. But to do this, we need the skill and experience to do so. Uh, that, that skill will come from the Imperial Diplomatic Corps, newly formed by Imperial and Governmental Decree. The Corps will act domestically and otherwise to improve both the image and the connections of the sovereignty to any who are amenable to other. They will also, however... Uh, and of course, focus their efforts when needed on specific goals, regions, or nations that are provided to them. And as such, and as some such focuses of attention are under consideration, should their competence and in our international position develop sufficiently, it may even be possible to open dialogue with the other regimes occupying Russian territory to the east. It may sound farcical, but if unification should be achieved absent bloodshed, it would be a worthy goal to pursue. Indeed, it would. We'll get two out of three, or rather, Russia will get two out of three. Diplomacy is essential. Indeed, it is. Oh, whoops. Oh yeah, we'll definitely grab this whoops. Now one area where mobilization will definitely not go well is the training. Uh, I'm getting the feeling that it, 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 there won't be, for the reservists, there won't be many refresher courses. The, the, the additional training will be minimal at best, but you know, hopefully not. Hopefully that they get... The ideal situation, of course, is, is that they get the most amount of training to make each man as useful as possible. But uh, somehow, some, somehow I don't think that's going to happen. If we were doing it that way, then... All of this mobilization would have happened before the invasion. 
Now, European overtures. Against Van Tyson and the other royals, Europe has long been a continent of monarchy, even if the realm that now occupies so much of it despises even the content of the institution. Some monarchies remain, however, and owing to his possession of the Grand Romanov bloodline, our czars connect to many of them through old marriages, alliances, and partnerships. These relations have lied dormant for many years, but it is now time to revive them for the modern age. We will, using the increasingly experienced persons of the Imperial Diplomatic Corps, open relations with these countries, establish mutually beneficial initiatives, and cement our status as a regional power. Dreams of further expansion notwithstanding, of course. The ideal situation for the Russians is that they're able to freeze the conflict in Ukraine. Like, like just kind of prevent the Ukrainians from, from launching attacks while also not, not launching attacks themselves, draining their current power. to so give the reservists, the newly mobilized, uh, the, the former service, service members as much time to train as possible. Of course, you got to supply all those men as well, not the logistics. I wonder how the referendums will go Friday, I think, they're scheduled for. Well, I say I wonder how I think they'll go. I know what's going to happen. They're all going to pass. And then Russia will be like, oh, look at that, it passed. Isn't that fantastic? We didn't see that coming at all. But, um, and we'll get annexed. But see, the thing is, right? Um, I'll read this first. Ties to the other, other royals, the historical connection and the connections and relationships, familial or otherwise, between the Romanov dynasty or those of uh, those of other European monarchs who remain on their thrones offers the state a unique opportunity by leveraging uh, those relationships along with utilizing friendly emigre networks and the expanding membership and expertise of the Imperial Diplomatic Corps. We can begin a coordinated campaign to win support from their countries. Though they may, in most cases, not hold the direct authority that our Tsar does, they are still monarchs, and among all monarchs, there is a common bond. Consequently, efforts in this direction will begin soon. Our diplomats will be dispersed throughout through the old capitals of Europe, hopefully to great effect in establishing both the reputation of the sovereignty and the value of commencing relations with it. Towards mutual benefit, indeed. Yeah, well, what was I saying? Ah, shit. Ah, that's a bollocks. I should have just said it. Now I can't remember. I'm talking about freezing the conflict, giving the reserves enough time to train. Ah, fuck. Yes, that's what I was going to say. So, once all of the referendums pass, and and, and and it's once and when, not if or maybe, they will pass and they will be immediately accepted, then all of that territory is considered by Russia to be, you know, as Russian as fucking Moscow or, you know, St. Petersburg. And all the citizens inside of it are Russian, and if they don't have citizen, citizenship, then they're permanent, citizen, uh, permanent residents, rather. So, currently, Putin has said that uh, conscripts will not be mobilized, which is kind of odd, because you've got these men in the army already who aren't being mobilized, and instead you're mobilizing reservists and guys who used to be in the army. It's very weird. But, as soon as those referendums pass, and if Ukraine attacks those territories, which I think they will, then, Russia, uh, then Putin and Russia can use the conscripts, so even more men. Now, that's the wrong thing. Oh, this is the thing. Great song, but I have to turn it down slightly. Now, Swedish royal, tile, uh, royal ties gets a, gets a trip to Stockholm. The Kingdom of Sweden, one of the few European nations who escaped the grip of German tyranny, is an ideal candidate for one of our first diplomatic overtures. King Gustav VI, uh, Adolf, though himself a constitutional monarch, is reportedly a measured character, and the country's lack of alignment with any one geopolitical faction ensures that we will not make enemies by extending relations. The decision has therefore been made for the Tsar himself to visit the country. That's kind of dangerous. Departing... Oh, yeah, that's kind of dangerous. Departing by ship from Archangels. Okay. Yeah, this is only furthers the flip floppiness of the German embargo. His visit will not only facilitate the drafting of formal recognitions and trade agreements with the Swedes, but will also act to further strengthen our legitimacy on the world stage. But yeah, so, yeah, then if the Ukraine attacks, I mean, they're hardly not going to attack. Though, the thing is, as soon as they're in a direct conflict with Russia, they can also strike the Russian border regions. Like, they have been striking the Russian border regions, but now there's, there's like, less reasons uh, not to. And as, as I imagine as soon as, if there is any formal declaration of war or anything like that, or even once Russia really kind of brings in the manpower, I imagine the Americans will give the Ukrainians the uh, Attackums missiles. Which is a great name for a missile. Ooh, 600,000. Fantastic. 704,000 men to be, to be mobilized. In the game, that is. In the game. Now, it is. Ooh, I should have uh, sort of started mobilizing. Alright. Here's what we're going to do. We need to start building up our military. We're going to need some time to do it. We need some time for them to train. So, let us deploy our units. Get started. We, don't, we, we do not want to do this last minute and cost, men lives, cost the lives of our men. Actually, I'm just going to do it here. Slow 104,000 is a good start. Oh, 
course, we now actually have uh, Redimsev, which is just hilarious. Where is he? Yeah, Redimsev, that's funny. As well as others in Soviet uniform. Very funny. But let us get... Mikhail Antipin? Yes, I'll get Mikhail Antipin. And we'll get Mikhail... We'll, no, we'll get Lubyshev. Yeah, we'll get Lubyshev. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah, sure. on, now, we're only going to go so high with this order. I'm not going to go all the way to the north, just because going north, all, going all the way north is just unnecessary, and this will allow us to, um, to further utilize our uh, manpower advantage by concentrating our men. There's no point spreading them out over the front. Like, we can co obviously, we've got more men than them, than, uh, than they do. But by not garrisoning these, you know, one, two, three, four provinces, we could even reduce that a bit more, to be honest. I suppose... No, 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 we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll, uh, we'll further compound our manpower advantage. Now, we will call more men up into training. No. Oh. Already? We can't, we can't call up anymore? Use these? Alright, fine. Fair enough. Also, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go straight with this. I'm going to go over here and get working on special forces stuff. Especially right here. Yeah. Now, a trip to Stockholm. As the Tsar's motorcade arrived at the Royal Palace in Stockholm, he could not but be impressed at its simple beauty. Uh, the beauty of a palace never sacked by revolutionaries. He did his best to show an air of detachment, but in truth he was very nervous. He was meeting another royal, and he had to show both his and Russia's strength. Respectfully shown towards the king's study where the real discussion would take place, he prepared himself. King Gustav received him warmly, speaking excellent, excellent Russian, more warmly than he had expected. It soon became evident that the king greatly enjoyed receiving someone, especially another royal who was not part of Germany's sphere. Before long, Vladimir knew he had found a strong common ground with Sweden, and discussions turned to trade. Before day's end, the deal had been struck. Russian resources, particularly oil, in exchange for Swedish technical expertise and investment in excellent trade indeed sounds good to me if only they could all go so well this will increase our liquid reserves by 300 million our industrial equipment will begin to improve and this will increase our foreign trade modifier what do we get I don't know I won't do that. I'm just in case. Tag heavy uh, witty. Now, Roman holiday. Get to win a Roman holiday. Italy, though once among the nations that invaded our land, is and remains the most powerful monarchy in Europe. In many ways, it exemplifies the Tsar's own goals, a strong and prosperous land with large swaths of territory in which to secure resources, and with a loving people democratically participating in a government under a respected king. We will therefore reach out to them. Members of the diplomatic corps will travel to Rome and attempt with all effort to secure formal relations with them. If they are successful, a corresponding increase in our national legitimacy, along with future beneficial trade prospects, can be realized. With 104,000 men in training, yeah. That's why we need to start early. I'll be deploying you as soon as possible. Yeah, put Russia will have to be careful with the way they use their newly mobilized men. If they just start fucking them in and there's mass surrenders, and oh, that will just tank morale. Not to mention hugely skyrocket Ukrainian morale, which is already riding pretty high after the fantastically swift recapture of uh, much of Kharkov. No, oh, what, what was the finish line? I must have misheard it. Oh, it was the stuff. My bad. Actually, yeah, good. Actually, no, get working on this stuff, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, Boris Scott, he's back. He's back. Roman Holiday. 
Tsar Vladimir excused himself from his handlers for a moment and moved to sit on a bench overlooking the Italian capital. Though he knew Russia had improved tremendously from where it once was, it had nothing like Rome, nothing like the skyscrapers, nothing like the number of cars, and above all else, nothing like the feeling of tranquility. He wished he could spend more time in this beautiful city, but he reminded himself he was not here for a vacation. He was here for his people. He was here to obtain both diplomatic recognition and economic opportunity, but progress had been slow. And he was frustrated no matter how much his advisors reminded him that such was normal when it came to diplomacy, and so his mind wandered towards reflecting on the beauty of Rome. One day he promised himself Russia would have building cities like this. Would it have already been possible had not the Reds and then the Germans not destroyed everything in their path if his family had kept their throne? He pressed those thoughts aside and instead pictured a Vyatka dominated by skyscrapers. He liked that thought. Will Russia ever be like this? This will increase our foreign trade modifier. Is that, is that just more trade deal opinion? Oh, that's shit. It didn't even increase it either. Okay, it did. Trade deal opinion factor is just useless, man. It used to be way better. It used to give you, it used to give you like minus 15% consumer goods or something, something ridiculous like that. Oh, yeah. Our mentor professionalism will be doing just fine. Just fine. Now, there we are. Fantastic. <laughs> Wrong series, my friend. There we are. 162,000. But all right, lads. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. I shall see you in the next episode where we shall continue our foreign policy tree and, of course, do the military tree. And perhaps even, yeah, more, yeah. Likely get into the conflict with Tumen. I shall see you then. Reformation of the United Kingdom. Ha! Ah, perfect. Another monarchy turns in full. And the French are here as well. Oh, my man. I didn't change. I hate that. I hate that. I love that drug. And we have a lot of kingdoms, though. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, but no, but a lot of them are in the offing now. We got Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, but there's still a regency. And then we got Serbia, but I don't think there. Yeah, there is no kingdom. Might be another regency. Uh, Italy, of course. Iberia. Once Franco dies, most likely, I think. Um, Britain, of course. France. Norway, Sweden. Uh, is Greece? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But yes, I shall see you in the next episode. See you then.